Hi folks, in the last TGB video, we got it running and I had a problem with the ignition. This was all I was left with from the original bike, as you can see there. And this was the pattern one that I'd actually bought, which I didn't realize was the actual wrong one. And uh, that left me in a bit of a dilemma. But I'd look around the workshop and I've actually found the correct one. I must've bought another one with a key and it fits perfectly. So I'm gonna fit that and I'm gonna do a few other little bits and pieces on this today and get it nearer completion. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, well this was the wrong uh, key set that I bought, or lock set rather. So I put that to the side, and I had a little route around the workshop. This is all I was left with, as you can probably see on the uh, original lock mechanism, but I actually found it, let me show you. This is it now, and as you can see, this one fits absolutely perfectly in there like that, with the bolts and everything, and the steering lock on it as well. And it connects up to the loom exactly right. So I've got a key for this, so all I've got to do now is just to bolt this back onto the framework there, as you can see. That's the steering lock mechanism that goes into that hole there and uh, just marries up. So I'm just going to put that back on now and uh, then we're going to start looking at other little jobs, things like taking this brake caliper apart and uh, that's in a very bad state as you can see. It looks like it's going to need new pads as well. So um, I have had a look on uh, eBay and I can't find any service kits for these calipers at all, like O-rings or seals or whatever, but I'm going to need to take it apart. So uh, I'll probably need new pads. So I'm going to look at that and we'll take that off in a minute and have a look and see what that's all about. And someone mentioned they said they thought I had a stone in the tyre. I don't know where it would be, but um, I did have a look at the video and I couldn't really see it. I saw a little knob on there which looked like something was stuck in the, the tread maybe, but I can't look at that properly until I spin the wheel around and I've got to get the uh, clamp on for that. Not the clamp, the spring, sorry, around the other side. And I've also got to put the uh, shroud over here for the cooling fan and it ducks along to the cylinder head there, so that keeps that nice and cool when it's ticking over. So let me just bolt this lock in and I'll come back to you. Right, that's it, that's the lock back in and connected up. I don't think this is the right shroud for it, but uh, it will do the job for now, and as you can probably see now, look, ignition on, we got ignition. And off, and when you click it down, you push it in, you turn it around the other way, you put the steering lock on, but uh, so all that is, seems to be in order, but as I say, this ain't the right shroud for it, but I'm, I'm not really too bothered about that. I'll have a look out for another one, but uh, I, I won't be hopeful. Right, now I've put the battery back in down there. This is uh, Jimmy's garage battery, but I'm going to probably buy him a new one. I'll keep that in there for now. I don't think he needs it yet. And I did express a concern about this wiring loom, which um, I found hanging in here. And I looked at my old videos, and I did have a wiring diagram for this and it didn't show on the wiring diagram. But uh, I do recall now, thinking about it, that this went to a 12 volt socket because it was something to do with power, something power supply or something like that, if you watch one of the previous videos. And I'm sure that went onto a 12 volt, like a cigarette lighter socket, which lived in the bottom of this seat housing here. So I'm happy with that now. So that's obviously what that's gonna be for. If it hasn't got one, I will fit one anyway. But that is a 12 volt supply for that. And it is an original part of the loom because it comes out of the loom and it, has, it is fused down as well. So that's what that is. It's a cigarette lighter or a power supply that sits in the, um, the helmet storage area. So I'm happy with that. Right, so I'm gonna take these brake calipers off now. I'm just gonna unbolt them and uh, front and back. This one obviously needs to come off. The forks are okay, they're in good condition, so I'm not gonna be touching them at all. And uh, so I'll just undo, unbolt this. We take these both in and uh, we'll have a look at the state of them. Now I'm just wondering where the uh, master cylinder is for this. They come up there, uh, might be behind this fairing up here somewhere maybe, not sure. The one for the back also comes down the front. And they both go up into the, that's it there, let's see, that's that Goodridge hose someone's put on there. And they both come up here into this head unit up here. So I've probably got to take this nose cone fairing off and it will probably be behind here somewhere. I can't actually see it initially, so uh, I'm going to do that now. Right, there we go, they do live underneath there, and it looks like they have been uh, leaking, or one of them's been leaking, this one for example, let me show you. 
it looks like there's been a bit of a wrinklage there where the brake fluid has leaked out maybe i don't know i'm not too sure but or it could have been spilt i don't know they, they seem to be dry so perhaps they're not leaking the uh tops need a uh, painting and probably cleaning as well the main body seem to be okay but i can actually dismantle these lids here take these i'll have a look inside them see if they're a bit gungy in there if they are i'm gonna have to clean them out the fluid to be honest with you looks pretty clean in there but uh, i will drain all the fluid out so that's them two caps have got to come off and then be repainted so i can do that the yokes and everything here seems to be in good order and these are sort of goodridge type hoses here so i'm happy with that so i can leave these hoses in situ and leave them connected i'll just remove the caps and uh, then all the fluid can be drained out so i'm going to probably do that now and i'll get these calipers off as i said to you so i'll see you in a minute Right, I finally got them off. That front wheel one was a right pain. I had to loosen the wheel off, get the disc off to slide this one off, but uh, it looks like something's been leaking there. I don't know what it is, whether it's old stuff or what, but uh, they need stripping down and getting the powder coat, and um, hopefully I can get the seal kits for these. As I say, I've had a look on eBay, which is my first port of call, and then I went to Google and I tried typing in TGB R50X brakes kits, and I couldn't find anything, so we'll have to see how we go. So they've got to be stripped down. That's the exhaust manifold coming off. And there's that pipe I was telling you about. It goes up to some sort of um, system. I don't know with a, a rubber hose connected to it. I don't exactly know what that is, but um, I think that might be to do with keeping its performance down. So I possibly will be blocking that off. I was going to cut this off at one stage, but I'll just cap that so that's not a problem. So I've got that to sort out. And someone did ask, did I have the shroud, as I said earlier on, for the... Uh, cooling fins and there we go that is a shroud there and it's got a hose there that goes somewhere i can't remember where that goes to but uh, i'm sure all will become clear when i sort it out so that's just what we cleaned up so i'm just going to give that a little bit of a wipe over first and i've got this gunk here which was provided by one of my subscribers so thank you very much and also talking about subscribers and my wish list uh, i've had this come through the post this has come from joshua flynn and it's a lovely little um, metric stainless steel allen nut screws and bolts whatever kit which is fantastic from looks like um it's got the sizes on there i can't see m5 m6 most of the stuff i use anyway so uh joshua writes thank you for the video on youtube on giving advice on how to deal with mold and mildew in the car that was a video i done when i had the Vauxhall signum and it left it for a few months and it was totally moldy inside so it doesn't smell of vinegar anywhere anymore by the way those of you who was interested and the mold has never come back so if you are interested in that that's just the way i got over it i'm not saying that's the right way to do it but uh vinegar is a good anti-mold uh, thing so that's what i used and that's what i did with one of those uh, suction hoovers or vacuum cleaners so that was that so anyway let me get some of this gunk poured into here and i'll just clean this up a bit because it's all oily so i've just got a little container over here so you don't need too much of this that's probably enough and it is an engine degree so i've used this for years i don't know what the new one's like though if it's anything like new nitromores that that doesn't work at all so let's just give this a little bit of a, a clean over and those are my handy bottle cleaners uh plastic bottle containers as you can see what i made on my retro hacks channel it's just out of a two litre soda bottle so i'll just use one of these paint brushes and literally all i need to do is just to give it a good wipe over get rid of all the grease and grime that's on it built up over the years and uh, yeah it's taking it off a tree i can see already it's taking it off a tree so the new gunk i think it used to be green years ago i'm not too sure but uh my memory serves me correctly or i'm thinking am i thinking of geyser if i remember rightly so uh i'm just going to do this give this a bit of a wipe over and uh, i'll see you in a minute it is coming off a tree as you can probably see there look see the grease on there look it cuts straight through it look very nice okay then here's the uh is this the front or the rear i can't remember i think this is the front caliper so let's just start taking this apart again i haven't got any manuals to go by here so it's a little bit of just common sense so we play it by here that's the olive connector for the hose. 
So there's a couple of fibre washers on there. No, sorry, they're copper washers on there, so keep them separate. There's a little cap there that comes off. I've already had this bolt out. I wasn't too sure what it done, so I just pulled it out of there. Um, it seems to release the plate for spinning that round like that. And then can you just pull this pin out there? There we go, look. That's the slide pin there, so that's how you get the pads out. So maybe you could have taken this off on the bike, but uh, I didn't know that, so. Okay, so these are the pads which do look pretty worn. I will have to get another set of them. So let's just remove that top one first. Yeah, look at that, look. That's seen better days, hasn't it? But it's only done just over 4,000 miles, so these are probably the original pads in this, so we just pull them off there for the minute. There's a little retaining clip there for that one. There is, on this plate, on the back one, there is some sort of anti-squill plate that sits on the back there. I don't know whether you get a new one of them, so I'll have to probably keep that for the moment. So those are the pads. I know there is a different varieties, but that's the ones I need anyway. So this is a 2010 model. So new pair of them, that's for the front. And that bracket can be cleaned up. That's the slide pin there, as I say, that can stay in situ, but um, I will give that a good clean up. And the bit we're all interested in, the rubber side, and I can see straight away that that has got a perished dust cover on there. So I'm going to either need a rebuild kit for these or get new calipers. I don't really want to have to go down that road, but uh, now I can see that's damaged. I'm not too bothered, not too bothered about just hooking it out, so because I'm going to need to replace them. Let me take that one out first. That's the uh, again slide pin cover there, isn't it? Again, which is split, so yeah, that's going to need refurbishing. That's the one for the slide pin. That looks okay, but uh, if they come in a kit, I'll obviously buy the whole lot. Now, I'm going to have to probably just push that piston out with the uh, airline. So I'm going to just connect the airline up. Right. Got the airline. So you have to be careful when you're doing this. Don't just go mad and don't, for God's sake, have your finger in there when you do it. So I'm just whacking some cloth in there like that. Turn it over. Just put the airline into there. And it should got a good enough seal which I haven't oh, I've changed I've put some tape on the end of that as you can see you can use a little washer but uh, just put the compressor on and hopefully A little twist that's solid absolutely solid in there so I may have to heat that up so I'm not holding that much hope for this but uh, we'll have a go anyway and I will have a look online to see if there's any um, repair kits for them if not I'll have to get new calipers nope that's not having it well, that's the first time compressed air has failed for me, so that shows you how seized in that caliper is. Let's squirt some WD into there. Maybe loosen it up from the back. Not looking very good, is it? Let's put that in the vise for a minute. Again, this sort of thing is all trial and error, I'm afraid, but... Uh, you have to just use a few little tricks if you can and hopefully get it moving. Once I get it moving, it should be okay. But uh, we'll just hold that in there like that for the moment. And just try and rotate this a little bit. Now uh, oh, look at that, look, it's just turning that, look. Tell you what, if I have that that way around actually, I'll just nip it up there. I've got these soft jaws in there, that might be uh, hindering me rather than helping me at the moment, I'm afraid. Right, let's just 
tight in there like that. Don't need to tighten up too hard. Oh, it's moving. Well, that was never going to come out of anything. There we go. Look, it is moving. Now I've got it moving. Let's put some lube down there. I don't hold out much hope for this, to be honest with you. So this is more of a just see what we can do sort of thing rather than uh, saving them. They're really tight. I could apply a bit of heat to them, I suppose. Because I'm going to need to... Uh, Change all the rubbers in them. Let's just get them out of the way for a minute. There we go. That's got better grip on it, hasn't it? Right. Let's just apply a little bit of heat to that and see what happens. Right. Let's see if that moves. Easier. Oh yeah, look at that. It's actually coming out. There we go. There we go, that was enough to do it, wasn't it? There we go. That's very hot. Be careful not to pick that up. So there you go, the pistons actually don't look too bad. I think it was just the rubber holding them. And the, well, in fact, I can see, I'll show you in a second, look. If we have a look at the corrosion there, around that seal there, can you see that? So that can all be sandblasted anyway. We might be able to save these, I'm not sure yet. So if, as long as I can get a repair kit for them, we should be okay. So yeah, there we go. Got that out with a bit of perseverance, but the, the air didn't want to know, did it, the compressed air? See, sometimes you've got to know how to suddenly get a seized part of, apart because this might be a bike which you can't get, or a vehicle that you can't get any parts for. So you have to refurbish these and providing you can get them apart, that, you know, you should be able to refurbish them. This is the uh, the other one, so I'm going to do the same with this now. Again, this one, I don't know whether this is as bad. It's a slightly different design, this one. But again, this one's totally seized up as well, so I don't hold much hope. Right, well, let me take this one apart in exactly the same way, and I'll come back to you in a second, and we'll have a closer look at them. I've just found this other caliper, which I had floating about, which I thought come off of the TGB. Uh, this one, that's actually all right. I don't know what, what bike it was off. Maybe Jimmy's Jalera Runner. And looking at them... They seem to be pretty much identical. Look, hold on. Forget the carrier bracket. The carrier bracket's actually different, but everything else there appears to be, look, exactly the same. Look. So all I have to do, if I can't refurbish these, whatever this one comes off of, um, not too sure at the moment, but uh, I'll have a look. But these, I could use these because they're exactly the same calipers, look. So definitely should be able to get parts for them. And that's the uh, brakes, which are very, very similar pads anyway in that. So they must be all pretty much generic, these um, these things, even though I've got code numbers on there, look. So I can use these code numbers for the pads, maybe. But the brackets just need changing over. If I put that bracket onto this pad, uh, onto this caliper, then I'll be able to use it. So there you go. I can use them, and there will be spares for them. Right, well, now I know that, I'm going to finish this video here for the moment. Just a little tinkering video on the TGB just to let you know what I'm up to. Hopefully in the next one, I'll have a rebuild kit for these. Uh, if not, I'll have uh, different calipers there and we can put them back on. I'll have the exhaust back on. That will be uh, painted with high temperature paint very shortly. And also that air cowling will go back on and we should start to be able to put things back together. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and have a look at the card up there. There's the um, whole series on this TGB build from when I had it seven years ago and you can see the journey it's been on. Anyway, thanks very much, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, bye for now.